Welcome to Dynamics with Danish. Today we are going to look at how to create custom controls using Power App Component Framework. Power App Component Framework enables pro developers to create enhanced UI components. Some out of the box controls are slider, flip switch. We can call these custom controls an advanced version of web resources that gives you the ability to use hundreds of client side frameworks and libraries like React. TypeScript, Mocha, and my favorite is Office UI Fabric. The reason why I like Office UI Fabric is because it has the same look and feel as your CE, and it's really easy to build them and use them. You can also use devices like camera, location, and microphone. Now, before you begin developing these controls, you would want to first install some of the prerequisites. And first thing on the list is NPM or Node.js. The recommended version is the long-term support. Next, you would want to have .NET Framework 4.6.2 installed on your machine. To build the code components, you would want to write some code. And for that, you would need code editor. My preference is Visual Studio Code, but you can even use Visual Studio 2017 or 2019, whatever you have. And the most important thing here is installing the Power App CLI. This is a command line interface that helps you create the code components. So make sure you install that as well. The link for all these downloads will be available in the description below. So let's get started. I have created an empty folder called PCF demo and I've navigated to that folder from my Visual Studio code using file open folder. Once you click on open folder, you can just navigate to your empty folder and that would be my working directory. Now, once you're in that folder in your terminal, then you would want to run the first command that is the pack PCF init. This would initialize the um, the PCF project for you. And it starts with, um, and it has attributes, namespace, name, and template. So you would have to provide your namespace, then you have to provide the name of the control, and then you have to provide the template. Template has two options, field and data set. I'm gonna use field for today's example. So once I have typed all this thing, I'm gonna hit enter which executes the command. And there you go. Now it says that the PCF project was successfully created in this particular directory. The second statement tells you that you have to also run npm install in this directory for installing the dependencies. So let's go and type in an npm install as well. Once all the dependencies are installed, then we can go into the code. So as you can see, I had given my control name as text submit. And here the command created a folder called text submit. Inside the text submit, if you expand that, you would see that there's an index file and then there's a control manifest file. First, we're gonna look at the control manifest file and then configure some of the properties. As you can see, the namespace we had provided appeared over here. So we are not going to change this. The constructor is the name of the control. And we are not going to change that as well. And we're not going to change the version as well. We're going to change the name of name of the control that is going to be displayed. So I'm going to put a space in between text and submit. I'm going to keep the same thing for the description as well. Rest, everything would be the same. Now. I want to change the property name from sample property and then I'm going to use input text. Same would be the name for my display and my description as well. Now, off type, I want it to be single line text. I don't want to change it. 
but if you want to change it there are several other data types that you can assign on the off type uh, like currency decimal whole uh, single line multi-text um, and then you have usage so usage has two options either it is bound or either it is input if it is bound means you can bind it to an attribute in crm if it is input then it appears as a free text field or you have also the option to bind it uh, but it all depends on what type of um, what data type you have added on the off type required as the name suggests whether it is required or not now if you want to use group of data types then you would want to follow this where you define the type group and you name the type group and then you define the types the data types that it would have and then you have to use this name on the off type group attribute on the property tag and when you're using off type group you cannot use off type then let's move on to the resources tag in the resources tag you have code which is your index.ts and then we are also going to use css so i'm going to copy this and edit over here i'm going to keep the same name as text submit.css and then you have feature usages so if you're going to use any of these features like audio image video or if you're going to use a device pick file then you have to enable this feature usage and then you can turn off everything else uh, for example let's say i'm going to use web api so i can i can enable this but then uh, remove everything else except the web api we would be looking into manifest file in details in the later videos uh, let's just concentrate on just creating the code component for today now as i have mentioned my css path we don't have the css path over here and we don't have the file called as text submit.css so let's go ahead and then create that first so first i'm going to create the folder called as css and then i'm going to create a file under it called as text submit.css there you go so let's go back here see if the name is right name is right okay so now let's move on to our index.ts file as you can see there are several functions already created in the index.ts file each of these function have a role to play for example the init function is used to initialize the controls instance here you can initialize your variables your data set your uh, control and your, your ui right so that's where init would come into play update view is called when the property bag has changed what that means is that the properties you have defined in the control manifest file and if the values on in those properties changes that's when the update view would be called it's also called when the data set changes or the um, if it is if you are using a data set as your template or global values such as the height width changes then you have the get outputs method this is called whenever the framework is receiving a new data and it can also be called uh, explicitly using notify output changed method which we would be looking uh, later on then we have the destroyed method and as the name suggests destroyed method would be called whenever it is getting unloaded from the tom tree now let's go ahead and then first thing that we would need to declare is our components global variables now what are components global variables components global variables are context so if if you want to use context somewhere else outside of init update view then we might want to create a global variable for context then i would be also declaring notify output changed as a global variable and i would also be declaring the container as the global variable so let's go ahead and then declare the 
variables. Once we have defined our component variables, then we would define our HTML element. Now the idea of my component today is going to be very simple. I'm going to create a text box and a button next to the text box. Whatever is getting typed in the text box, once you, once the user clicks the button, I would be showing an alert with the text that was entered by the user. So for that, what I would need is I would need a text box and a button. But because I want to show text box and button next to each other, I would also need a main container that I can add some CSS properties to. So let's go ahead and declare our HTML elements. After declaring your HTML elements, next thing you want to do is declare your event listener. Now, why we need an event listener? Because whenever the button is clicked, we want an event to be triggered. That's why we, we need event listener. That's it. So all the preparation steps have been completed. Now, let's go and add our UI in the init function. Here, first thing we would do is we would initialize our component variables. Next thing we would be doing is we would be fetching the data from the property and then storing it in a temporary variable. Now, how to fetch the data from a property? To fetch the data from the property, so I'm going to declare a temporary variable. Let's say we're calling it as current input data. And we would be using context, which is coming from here as a parameter. And context has several other properties and one of the property is parameters which gives you the list of all the parameters that were declared i'm getting the correct property name and that property name has several other properties in it and the one that we are interested in is the raw so raw gives you the actual value from that property And because it can contain null, I don't want my current input data to contain any null value. So I'm going to declare that if it is null or if it is undefined, then assign an empty string to it. Next, we are going to create our UI. First, we're going to start with main container. Then we would be defining a text box. And after that, we would be defining a button. So we have captured this value from the parameter. We want that value to show up on the text box. So I would also set my value attribute with the current input data. So that, that defines our text box. Now let's move on to defining our button. Now button is gonna invoke an event. So we would want to define our event listener as well. So button dot add event listener. And then what would be my event? My event would be click. And my event listener would be the one that we have defined above, which is event submit click. Now, we have assigned the event listener to the 
button but we have not defined it so let's go ahead and then first let's define my submit click event so i'm going to do it over here the assignment of event listener to the function has to be done before we create the ui so let's do that So there you go. Once we have defined our UI, we now have to add the elements to appropriate containers. I would be adding my text box and my button to my main container. And then I'll be adding my main container to the components container. So here I have added text box to my main container, button to my main container, and then I've added my main container to the components container. Now let's save this file and in the code to my CSS file. Let's now test this control. To test the control, you want to run npm start watch. And there you go. You have the text box and you have the button. Now this value is coming from whatever is been inputted over here. When you click this, you would see that it's showing the value from the text box. Now once I change this, when I click the button, I should get an alert with the text specified in the text box. And there you go. The link to today's code is available on my GitHub and the link is provided in the description below. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, then leave a comment below.